Hua Hin. This is where Duncan's Thai kitchen all began. But last time, I took you north. We went right up into Isan and then to Chiang Mai. But this time, I'm gonna take you south. The food in the south is incredible, so full of flavor. And the people and the places are amazing. Let's go and cook. I'm so excited to be back sharing with you the brilliant flavours of Thailand. The South is beautiful and it's just insane how different the ingredients can be while still in the very same country. So we've started our journey heading down towards Chumpon and we've come across this roadside diner literally with cars and motorbikes flying past and I'm affectionately calling this one Ran Nong Noi which is restaurant of Nong Noi because Noi right next to me is actually my wife's best friend from when they were little tiny kids and it's really lovely to be here at her establishment. And today what I'm going to be cooking is Yum Bun Sen Tale, which is a noodle salad with lots of seafood, lots of flavour, delicious. The key ingredient or one of the key ingredients is the mung bean noodles. Now when you use these mung bean noodles, soak them overnight or at least for a few hours first before you blanch them. We take those soaked noodles and just drop them into some boiling water. And then we've also got some seafood here, some calamari, some mussels, and also some baby prawns that are all caught locally right here because we're right on the coast. While they're cooking, we're going to make a dressing. The dressing's really simple. Toasted chili jam or numprik bao. This is sweet, it's aromatic, it's a really delicious item to use for any salad dressing or a marinade, about one tablespoon. Then to that we add some fish sauce, again about one to two tablespoons. Some fresh lime to give it a bit of kick, some nice zest. So I've got two whole limes. And then stir that together. Okay, firstly make sure you taste that. Just needs a little bit more lime juice. And then we'll go back to our seafood. So the seafood and the noodles are both cooked. And those mung bean noodles have gone really translucent, almost like glass. Just give that a bit of a stir to allow the dressing to soak into the noodles and in and around the seafood. And then our other fresh ingredients. We've got here some fresh chili, a lot of fresh chili, nice and hot, really kick of a dish. And then some fresh tomato, but don't use cherry tomatoes, use the large tomato cut into wedges, and then white onion, nice and fresh aromatic. Some fresh celery herb, mix it all together. That's it, just time to present it. But when you put it on the plate, make sure that you scoop out the noodles and put those on the plate first. The people around here are so lucky to have fresh local seafood at their doorstep any time of the day. And then finish that off with some celery herb. And that's it, Yum Wun Sen Tale, right here at Ran Nong Noi with Nong Noi herself. Kopkin Karp Nong Noi. I might ask Nong Noi to come and try this with me and I'll see if I can get the chef's approval. There you go. This wonderful, modest, hard-working family is everything I love about Thailand. They live and work together with simple values of togetherness, healthy food, clean air and good company. What else could you ask for? On our way into Chumpon, I came across the most stunning little fishing village, Ban Bang Bu. It completely took me by surprise. The vibrant colours were like that of Carnival in Brazil. 
However, the atmosphere was still and peaceful. The large saltwater estuary that runs from the Gulf of Thailand is home to oyster farms, boats, and the community of stilt houses that line its banks. While I was here, I also stumbled upon one of my favorite Thai ingredients. Every country in the world has one ingredient that they say you just have to get used to. And in Thailand, it's shrimp paste. And down in the south, it's used in so many things. It's so simple, they just take krill straight from the ocean, mixed with sea salt, and then left in the sun for several weeks. And then all the liquid drains out, and that liquid can be used for cooking as well. And then over time, after weeks and then even years, the shrimp paste gets richer and more developed in flavour. It's incredible. Don't go past it, shrimp paste. After having picked up a few fresh ingredients and a quick stroll around the village, the heat was telling me to partake in one of my favourite beverages straight from Mother Earth. Yep, a fresh chilled coconut. Full of electrolytes, magnesium, potassium and calcium, it's the ultimate drink to regenerate your soul. But it was time for me to get a move on. The next town has a very special story to tell. Ah, oh, freedom. Free to explore out in the fresh air. You've just got to love Thailand. Chumpon is a quiet seaside town which lays to the east of the northern hills of Phuket Range. It's really stunning. Tourists are made to feel very welcome and there's lots to see and do. You can travel here easily by train, bus and by air, direct from Bangkok. I love coming to Chumpon, and as I'm a bit of a keen golfer, I couldn't resist to check out some of the beautiful courses that Chumpon has on display. Goit Giao is one of the most popular noodle soups in Thailand. However, this one's called Goit Giao Hang, which means it's a dry noodle. So we take the exact same ingredients, but we don't add too much liquid. Really delicious. And this one's actually flavored with Tom Yum paste. What I love most about this dish is that it's so healthy because all of the ingredients are blanched in fresh water. We start by putting in some fresh rice noodles. And then we add some luk chin. Now in Thailand, luk chin is so popular. It's very simple. It's actually meat. You can use chicken or fish or beef or pork. Blend it into a fine paste with a little bit of taro flour and then rolled into a ball and then blanched. Really simple. The ones we're using today are fish luk chin. Then also we add some fresh prawns, some ocean prawns. And then we wait for those to boil only for about one minute. And then just after a minute, take one of the noodles, break it and eat it. If it's al dente, it's just firm on the tooth. Just put all of the noodles, the luk chin and the prawn into the bowl. And then we start to add that wonderful Tom Yum flavor. It's so simple, take some Tom Yum paste and about half a tablespoon into the noodles. Then we also take some chili jam, toasted chili jam. Adds a little bit of sweetness and a slight smoky rich flavor. And then mix that around. So now that the Tom Yum flavor has gone into the dish, it's important to get the consistency of the noodles right. So I've just got a small amount of stock here just so that it comes slightly wet. Mix that in, and then we move it across to our presentation plate. Make sure the look chin are evenly spread around the noodles, and the prawns on top. Okay. From that point on, we start to add the other ingredients, the other fresh vegetables. They also get blanched. At this point, we just blanch them one by one and then place them delicately. So you're almost creating like a picture, a work of art. Firstly, the bean shoots. They'll only take 30 seconds, no longer. Then you can add some fresh greens. You could use Gai Lan, Chinese broccoli or mustard greens are fine as well. some fresh baby corn. I know sometimes we all like to rush our food. 
we like to cook everything in a pan all at once. Sometimes it's important just to take your time and do these steps. You'll really appreciate the food so much more in the end. Then some enoki mushrooms. And that's it for the blanched ingredients. And now we add some other flavorings just to finish it off. Some baby spring onions, some fresh coriander, some crushed peanuts. A little bit of fried garlic in oil, and you can put the oil on as well. Some fresh lime to squeeze over. And just a pinch of white pepper. Then on the side, some white sugar, some dried chilli. Some chilli in vinegar, just to add a small touch of acidity. And then some fish sauce, the nam pla. And that's it, it's so simple. You take that to the table, squeeze the lime on, stir it all together, and then eat it. It's great. Another version of having a goi tiao, but goi tiao hang, goi tiao tom yum hang. On the point overlooking the ocean is one of the most important places in Thailand's maritime history. The Siam Navy used Chum Porn as its base due to the positioning of the narrowest point of the southern peninsula and for its central viewpoint over the Gulf of Thailand. Home to the memorial of Admiral Chum Porn, it is also home to the very first modern naval boat in Thailand's fleet, which was sailed here from England by Prince Chum Porn himself. Not only can you touch and manoeuvre the immaculately maintained machinery, you can even enter into every part of the ship. I think I might have a peek. <laughs> After hearing all the stories from my grandpa when I was a kid of his time in the Navy, it's really special to come down right into the engine room of such an amazing ship. At 38 degrees Celsius and 110% humidity, I found a great sense of respect for the people who would have worked deep in the belly of these ships. Grandpa, 45 degrees? It's written in Thai. Mm, okay, how's that? <laughs> what a blast. On the way back to town, I found a roadside shop selling an amazing range of dried and preserved seafood products. Everything here is made by hand, with patience and dedication, before being beautifully presented and sold mainly to local customers who are wanting to add umami to their food. Fish, calamari, prawns, dried cuttlefish and shrimp. The smells are rich and inviting. I found so many things to buy. And then of course, there was this little beauty. Sold in a recycled whiskey bottle, it's what I call ingenuity. This here is called Tai Pla. This is an ingredient that we're going to see all over the south of Thailand. Now, this ingredient adds so much flavour to different items such as salads and rice salads, and also soups and curries as well. This is fermented fish guts. Literally, they take the guts from the fish, mix it with salt and let it ferment. It's very strong, very pungent, but it adds an amazing flavour. Don't let your nose deceive your mind. Tai Pla. We're in the south. I can't speak more highly of the wonderful people I've met in the southern states. I feel welcome and relaxed. Before continuing my journey south, I thought it would be fitting to set up roadside to cook my next stunning dish. Tom Duet Marat. This is a really simple, easy, quick, fresh and fragrant soup. Okay, let's get started. The first ingredient is bitter melon. It's really good for diabetes. If you don't like the food too bitter, you can blanch it in hot water first and it will extract some of that bitterness. What I've done here is cut them into one inch lengths and then scooped out the center with a spoon. And then we make the stuffing. 
really simple. We've got some minced pork, about one cup, half a cup of diced carrots, half a cup of diced shiitake mushrooms. And then we've got some of the, the mung bean wunsen noodles that have been blanched very quickly in water so they're soft. Some chopped garlic, about two cloves, just finely chopped. About half a tablespoon of sugar, just to give it a slight sweetness. A pinch of pepper. Some oyster sauce, about one and a half tablespoons. And a splash of soy sauce. All we have to do then is mix it together until it's nice and even. So that's nice and even. And then take generous spoonfuls, put your palm on the bottom, and then force it down into the bitter melon. Just clean off the edges, and then into some boiling water. Right, just to finish off the soup, just take some fresh herbs, some baby spring onions, and some fresh coriander, and just chop it rustic, fresh, into about a quarter of an inch pieces. A small season for the soup. Again, a little bit of soy sauce. A small amount of sugar. And a generous, but not overly generous, pinch of pepper. Finish that off with the fresh herbs. And that's it. However, the way I like to have it at home is just with a little bit of extra garlic flavour. It is optional, but a couple of whole garlic cloves in the soup add some flavour. Give that about another eight minutes until the bitter melons become soft and the pork is cooked all the way through. Time to serve it. Just pick up the stuffed bitter melon, all four pieces into one bowl. It's so fragrant, I love the garlic, all the fresh herbs, and the simplicity of the soy with the pepper. Incredible. Tom Jut Marat. Sitting by the side of the road and watching me cook, Uncle has requested, laughing by the way, to be the one to try what he called white man's Thai. A little bit of pressure, but I think I've got his approval. On the road again and heading to the Novotel Golf Resort. A friend of mine is the chef here and has invited me to come and cook my next dish by the fairway. Man, what a location. Thailand is some of the nicest courses. I think I might have to finish the back nine when I'm done. Koi Tiao Nua, one of my favourite soups. Really delicious, fresh and full of deep, rich flavour. That flavour is what we call umami, which is, it's the back of the palate and it's the depth that you have in food. And for this dish, we're using oyster sauce to create that umami. First, for the stock, we need fresh water. So we place in there about two litres of water. Then we add some beef bones, some nice fresh beef bones. Also we add some star anise, some peppercorns, some garlic, and with the garlic, leave the skin on and just use the side of a knife and just bash those just to open it up and let the flavour come out into the soup. Again, some coriander root, just crushed lightly with the back of a knife. And one or two kaffir lime leaves, just to give it a little bit of pecans, a little bit of zest. Also in Goitio, they put goji berries. And they say in Thailand that the goji berry takes away a little bit of the flavour from the beef, makes it a little bit cleaner in flavour, and also a bit more aromatic and fragrant. Some soy sauce about two tablespoons, and then the oyster sauce. Again, two or three tablespoons. With this soup, it's a slightly sweet soup. You could add white sugar or palm sugar, but what I've got here is a coconut sugar. 
about two tablespoons again. After two hours, the stock is looking fantastic. It's time now to take out all of the ingredients so we've got a nice clean stock to work with. Now we need to add the fresh ingredients. I've got some sliced beef. Now in Thailand, they don't always use the most tender cut of beef. In Thai food, there's always a slight chew to the food. So don't be afraid to use a cut from the shoulder. We also add some luk chin, and these ones are the beef luk chin. Give that a moment to heat up, and then we add the noodles. It's heated through, so now we can add the noodles. We're actually going to blanch them in the stock rather than blanching them in water and then adding them separately. Now that the noodles are cooked, we're going to add some pak bong, or what we call morning glory in Australia. Time to serve. Take out the noodles first with a pair of tongs and just lay them into the bottom of the bowl. Then ladle out all of the goodies, the stock, the luk chin beef balls. It smells fantastic. Now to finish off the guai tiao, we just add some garnishes. We've got some fresh bean shoots, a mixture of coriander and spring onions. In Thailand with guai tiao, very important to taste the stock first. Judge the sweetness and judge the sourness, and then we add to that to balance the flavors perfectly. We've got here some vinegar with chili, a little bit of fresh chili, some white sugar, a little bit of dried chili, some garlic fried in oil, and then, of course, fish sauce. And that's it, it's so simple. Really lovely and fresh, delicious. Mix that all together and enjoy. Guaitiel Nua. On the next episode, we go to visit some of the most wonderful people I have ever met, experiencing village life and community spirit. And I head to Koh Samui to cook up a storm. <laughs>